friends, and welcome back to my channel. Today, we are going to be making this super cute zucchini squash for fall. This project is a beginner-friendly one that uses the double crochet, half double crochet, single crochet, and slip stitches. Let's talk about what you're gonna need to make this. You're going to need some yarn. I'm going to be using these hand-dyed wools today. I've got marigold hand-dyed wool, as well as some that I did with food coloring in a previous video. Check it out in the corner if you wanna learn how I did this. By the way, this is about a number four weight wool today. You're also going to need a crochet hook. I'll be using a 4.5 millimeter hook today. You'll also need some scissors, as well as a yarn needle to weave in your ends. We may also need a stitch marker or two today, but you can just use a short piece of yarn if you haven't got any stitch markers. And last but not least, you're going to need something to stuff your project with. I'll be using this flax fiber that I have on hand, but you can use the stuffing from a pillow or some old yarn scraps or fabric scraps that you've got around. Just something to stuff it with. So gather your supplies and let's jump in. Working with the yellow yarn, we're going to begin with a slip knot. From here, chain 33. One, two, three, 31, 32, and 33. Now in the fourth chain from the hook, one, two, three, and four, we're going to put a double crochet. Then we're gonna double crochet into the next nine stitches. So that was the first one. Now nine more for a total of 10. Two, three, eight, nine, and 10. So here's a spot where you can put a stitch marker right in that 10th stitch. Now for the next 10 stitches, we're going to do half double crochets. So that's yarn over, insert the hook into the stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through all three loops. And we're gonna do that for the next 10 stitches. There's two, three, four, and 10. Now here's where we can put our second stitch marker. Now for the remaining stitches, we're just going to do single crochets. So there's one, two, three, nine, and 10. And at the end of the row, chain one and turn. Now for row number two, we're going to begin with single crochets. So we did single crochets, half double, and double crochets. You can see that the row gets taller as the stitches are larger stitches, and that's going to make that squash shape that we know. So we're going to start with a single crochet in the first stitch as normal, and then for the next stitches, we're going to do single crochets in the back loops only. So usually we would go through both loops of the stitch like that, we're just going to go through the back loop of the stitch. And we're gonna do nine more single crochets through the back loops only. And that's gonna bring us to our half double crochets. When we switch into our half double crochets, we're going to be using the back loops only again. From here on out, we're going to be working across in back loops only. And here I am at my half double crochets. So I'm gonna switch stitches to half double crochets, but still only through the back loop of the stitch. That's gonna create a little ribbed pattern that looks like the ridges on our squash. And I'm going to half double crochet in the back loops only until I get to my next stitch marker. Here I am coming up to my next stitch marker. So I'm going to switch in to double crochets at this point put my last half double crochet in there, and now I'll switch to double crochets in the back loops only. At the last stitch of the row though, I'm going to double crochet through both loops of the stitch. That's gonna leave us with a nice straight edge, which will make it easier when we're doing our drawstring work in the end. Don't worry about that yet. Here I am coming up to the end of row number two, doing my double crochets in the back loops only. I've got three left, now two left, and now for the last stitch of the row, I'm going to do a double crochet through the entire stitch. And then I'm gonna chain two and turn. Now you can really start to see the difference in height. Single crochet, half double, double. And because we did it in the back loops only, we've got this ridge on one side. And on this side, no ridge. Now for the first stitch of row number three, we're going to do a double crochet through the entire stitch. 
And then the next nine double crochets, we're going to do them in the back loops only. We're going to work across the row, back loops only, so 10 double crochets, 10 half double crochets, and then 10 single crochets. But in the last single crochet of the row, we're going to go through both loops of the stitch. I'm gonna zoom through this row and I will meet you at the end of row number three to show you how I'm finishing up the row. Here I am coming up to the end of row number three. I'll put my last single crochet through both loops of the stitch and then chain one and turn. Now for row number four, we're going to start with a single crochet through both loops. And then from here, we're going to work in the stitch repeat we did for the last row but we're gonna do back loops only, except for the last stitch of the row where we're gonna be doing a double crochet through both loops. I'm gonna zoom through number four and I'll see you at the end of the row. Here I am coming up to the end of row number four now. I'll put my last double crochet in the back loop and then my final double crochet through both loops of the stitch. Then I'll chain two and turn. And now it's really starting to be obvious. You can see those ridges from our back loops only. Those are going to be the ridges on our squash. And you can see since we've got those double crochets, it's gonna have that squat round bottom tapering down the middle and then the neck of the squash will be like this. You can already kind of see the shape coming together. Now from row number five all the way up to row number 17, we're going to do the exact same repeat. So double crochet where there's a double crochet, half double where there's a half double, and single where there's a single. Just remember to put the crochet stitch through both loops at the beginning and end of the row. Now I'm gonna zoom through this part because it's exactly the same repeat over and over, and I will see you at the end of row number 17. Here I am at the end of row number 17, and now we've got this lovely shape here. Kind of looks like, like a doll dress or something, but you can see that the double crochets have made a nice wide rectangle. The half doubles are tapering it down, and then the singles are making it even smaller. What we're gonna be doing next is folding the shape over onto itself, and then we're going to be working in single crochets to close up this seam. So I've got my working loop in the front. I'm gonna put my hook back in here and then I am going to insert my hook into the first stitch where the uh, tail is coming out. I'm going to yarn over and pull my loop through both of those. Then I'm just going to pull that down tight and now I'm going to insert my hook into the first stitch on the first piece of fabric and then I'm going to insert it onto the first stitch of the second piece of fabric, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through both loops and there's a single crochet. And now I'm gonna single crochet through the second stitch on both pieces, just like that. And then the third stitch. And I'm just going to single crochet all the way down the work. One single crochet in each stitch all the way down. I'm also single crocheting over the tail of yarn at this point so that I don't have a tail to worry about at the end. All right, I've finished the row of single crochets here and now we're gonna turn the work and we're gonna work around this side of the work. We're just gonna do a round of single crochets here. So I'm gonna put a single crochet in the same stitch. So where we put our last single crochet to single crochet the ends together, I'm gonna put another single crochet in here just to turn the work. Now in every double crochet, I'm going to put one single crochet. And that is just gonna tighten up this circle a little bit. One single crochet in each of the double crochet rows. All right, here I am back at the beginning of the round. I'm going to just slip stitch to that first single crochet and then I'll pull a loop through at that point. And now we've got our end sort of tightened up a little bit. At this point, we are going to be cinching this closed. I wanna use some synthetic thread for this because the wool is likely to rip if I try to draw string it closed with the wool. So I'm gonna go ahead and get some acrylic. I've got some of this gold acrylic and I'm going to create a little bit of a chain just so that it's extra strong. So I'm gonna do a slip knot and then I'm going to pull a loop through the slip knot. Basically, I'm doing chain stitches, but I'm doing it with my hands. So I've got a loop, I'll pull the stitch through that loop, pull another bit through the loop, pull it through the loop, and I'm just pulling it all the way down tight. So it is a chain stitch, just a tight one, and that's gonna create a little piece of rope for us to do our drawstring work with. So I'll just zoom through this part, 
and I will come back once I've made my little length of yarn to do our drawstring. All right, here is my length of yarn. It's about six inches long. I think that should be fine. I don't think we'll need it any longer than that. Now let me just find my yarn needle here and I am going to thread up my yarn needle. And then in those single crochets that we did, I am going to just weave my needle up and down through those single crochets, just like this. And then I'll draw that string through and keep going until I'm back at the beginning of the round. All right, here I am at the beginning of the round. I'm gonna just pull that loop through. And now I'm going to use these strings here and I'm gonna draw closed the bottom of our little zucchini squash. And again, the synthetic thread here is going to allow us to draw it really tightly closed without the yarn breaking. So I'll just pull that really, really tight to close up that bottom circle. And then I'll just knot it closed. We don't even need to weave in this end because we're about to do the next step, which is turning this whole project inside out. I'm gonna do one final knot with the original tail as well as both of the pieces of that synthetic yarn. And we'll just pull that through and then I'll cut it. Now we're going to turn this inside out. From here, I'm gonna take a second and I'm going to break up some of my fiber and I'm going to stuff this little zucchini with my fiber. All right, now that we've got the squash all stuffed, we're going to be making the top portion that connects to the plant and a little tendril coming off of that. Let's zoom in for this. I'm gonna switch into my green yarn at this point. So now I'm going to pick a spot to start. It doesn't really matter where. I'm gonna insert my hook into that spot. And then I'm going to loop the yarn around my hook and pull it through. Then I'm going to chain one. I'm gonna drop the tail and I'll chain one. If you hear demonic voices in the background, it's just the birds. All right, now that we've got our chain one, I'm going to single crochet into the same stitch. Just like that. And now we're going to single crochet one time in each stitch around. So there should be 17 stitches because we did 17 rows. And we're just putting one single crochet into the first stitch of each of the rows. And we're gonna do that all the way around. All right, we've made it back to the beginning of the round. In that first chain one, I'm gonna slip stitch the round together just like that. And now we've got our first round of the top of our zucchini. Now for the second round, we're gonna start with a chain one. And now for this round, we're going to single crochet two together all the way around. So we're gonna shrink the row down by half. So to single crochet two together, I insert the hook into the stitch, yarn over the hook and pull up a loop, insert the hook into the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, and then yarn over and pull through all three loops on the hook. And we're gonna do that in each stitch all the way around. This is gonna shrink that down so that it's more like a stem. All right, now I've made it all the way around. I'm going to slip stitch to join the round at that first single crochet, and then I'll chain one. And now for this next round, I'm just going to single crochet one time in each stitch around. Gary, what are you talking about? Now I'm gonna join this round with a slip stitch, chain one, and then I'm gonna do three more rounds where I just put one single crochet in each stitch around. I'll just zoom through this part because it's just single crochets in a tiny little round. And although it's a little finicky, we're almost done. So just deep breaths and you can do it. <laughs> I'll see you when I finish those three rounds. All right, here is how it's looking after three more rounds there. I'm gonna slip stitch to join, chain one. And now for this next round, we're going to single crochet two together all the way around. So this is gonna shrink it down again a whole lot by half. If you end up with an extra single crochet at the end, just put one single crochet into it. It's not that big of a deal. This, at this point, we're just trying to shrink it down. All right, here I am at the end of that round. I'm gonna slip stitch together, and then I am going to go ahead and insert a little bit more stuffing into the top at this point, because we are just about to close this thing up. Maybe I should have put it before this row, but here we are. All right, now that that is all filled up, we're gonna do our last round. And for this last round, we're just going to single crochet all of the stitches together. No, we're not. We're gonna do single crochet two together all the way around. And we should end up with very few stitches in the round at this point. I think we're gonna end up with three stitches. There's one, there's two, 
And here's our last single crochet two together. What is it, Gary? What's wrong? You're so cute. You're so cute. All right, there we go. <laughs> Jeez, that was a little snug. Last one in the round. And now I'm gonna go ahead, because the round is closed up at this point, there are no stitches available. Um, so I'm gonna finish this project off by doing a chain of five, four and five. And then I'm gonna trim my yarn, pull that tail through, and then I'm going to trim it with just a little bit of extra space after for the tail there. And guess what, friends? Ta-da! It's finished! What do you think? I think this is such a cute little home decor item for fall. I just love how this naturally dyed marigold yarn looks for this squash pattern. In the pale yellow, it's still very cute. This acrylic one came out just adorable, but I feel like this gold just gives it a little bit of extra autumn vibes. The little tendril at the end, first of all, leaves you with no ends to weave in, but I feel like it also gives a little bit of whimsy. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below if you're gonna be making one of these cute little zucchini squashes for your home decor for autumn. I definitely uh, am happy that I made a few of them. I'm going to have a little pile of them in my fruit bowl. The little ridges from the back loops only only crochet made the little vine veins in your squash and then by doing the decreases at the top we end up with this perfect taper for the stem I love the little tendril I think this is such a cute little whimsical decor item for you to add to your project list and I really do hope you try this one because it was simple quick and it came out so cute. This is also such a great toy for the littles. And I think if you're making a bunch of vegetables for your kiddo, this is one you should definitely add to your list. I love it. Anyways, friends, that's all I've got for you today. Thank you so much for watching and thank you to everyone supporting the channel this month. Here is the list of everyone who is supporting the channel. Thank you guys, you rock. And if you'd like to join in and support the channel as well, check out the links in the description down below. Along with those links, you will also find all related tutorials down there. So if you're new to crochet and you want an up close tutorial on how to do the double crochet, half double crochet, or single crochet, back loops only or otherwise, all those links will be listed down there. Like I said though friends, that's all I've got for you today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye!